I bet you're here because you want to make a weeping willow tree for your terrain or diorama. Or maybe you just want to stick one on a shelf. Perfectly valid reason. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make this one. If you've seen my cherry tree video, the initial wireframe is essentially the same, but the similarities end there, so make sure you stick around. As per usual, my materials are listed in the description below, so let's get to it. We're going to start with some 22 gauge floral wire. The pack I bought is 16 inches long, which works well for a 28 millimeter gaming scale or a 1 to 64 ratio. For those of you who don't know, a 28 millimeter scale is when an average height dude is represented by a 28 millimeter figure. This means that a weeping willow tree with an average height of 40 feet would be represented by a model tree that is 190 millimeters tall. Let's see how close I can get to that scale. Unpack your floral wire, grab a dime size bunch, in this case about half the pack, and split it into five different size bundles. Put a 90 degree bend about four to five inches from the bottom of each bundle. These will act as the root structures later on. To hold each bundle together, grab a single wire and wrap it a few times around the base in each direction of the bend. Then do the rest. Now wrap them all together with one of the wires from a bundle. If you run out of wire, just grab another from the trunk. Once you get about halfway up the trunk, you can start pulling some branches out. Wrap these the same way you did the trunk, but only for an inch or two. Split each branch into two or three segments and wrap each segment the same way you did before. Keep splitting and wrapping until you get down to groups of four or five wires, at which point you can just twist the wires instead of wrapping them. Continue this until the end of each branch is a single wire. Once you've finished a segment, you can bend it out of the way. Uh, so now that I've gotten this far, I really feel like something isn't quite right. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, I think I know the issue. A lot of my references have branches that start much lower on the trunk than mine. I included this part of the video because I wanted you to see that wire is flexible and up to a certain point, you can adjust things as you go. After unwrapping the trunk a bit and pulling out some lower branches, I feel much better about it now. Now I just need to finish wrapping, splitting, and twisting until all the branches are done. It's a little funny looking right now, but trust the process, okay? Grab your wire snips because this tree needs a haircut. Er, pruning? I don't know if it qualifies as a tree yet. Anyway, cut all the long ends down to an inch or so. You know my love of crooked trees, I couldn't help myself here. I dug out the pliers and bent the hell out of the trunk and branches. Apparently the tree didn't like this though because it stabbed me. Rude. Okay, the top of the tree is looking pretty good. Time to move on to the roots. Use the same approach as the branches, but keep the segments short and stop once you get to groups of four or five twisted wires. Generally speaking, only the really thick roots of a tree are above ground. The thin tendrils are deep below, so you don't really see them. Now it's starting to look like a tree. If you've seen my cherry tree video, you'll know that I prefer hot glue for my tree bark texture. It's easy, fast, flexible, and durable. However, this isn't always appropriate to use as it melts easily. Maybe you live in a warm climate. Must be nice. Or you need to leave it in a hot car sometimes. Who knows? In any case, I wanted to provide an alternative method on this tree. You can use golden fiber paste for this, but it's a bit spendy. <laughs> Because of this, I attempted to make my own fiber paste. I still prefer the hot glue, but like I said, this is just an alternative. So after much trial and error, the recipe is as follows. 10 grams of PVA glue, which is about half a tablespoon. A two inch ball of loose cellulose fibers. I'm using some I scraped from the inside of a diaper, but you can also use shredded toilet paper or newspaper here. Three grams of acrylic craft paint, about one teaspoon. 12 grams of baking soda, about one tablespoon, eight grams of baby powder, about one tablespoon, and lastly, about six grams of Mod Podge, which is about two teaspoons. You don't have to use baby powder, but I found the combination of baking soda and baby powder made it a bit more workable for me. At first, it seems too dry to mix, but keep stirring and it will eventually give you a thick and workable paste. Now you just plop some on the tree and spread it around. 
I started with a popsicle stick, but I switched to a brush to give me more control. It takes a little practice, but keep going and you'll find your groove. After about 10 minutes, you can jab the paste with a chip brush to add a convincing bark texture. I also sculpted a knot into the trunk, but this isn't necessary. I recommend doing this in two parts. Do the main body first and let that dry so you have something to hold on to while you do the branches, roots, and ends later. The thin ends require a bit more finesse. It's helpful to clean your brush regularly as you work. The fiber paste won't stick to your brush if it's clean and slightly damp. Keep going until your tree is fully coated. I decided to make my trunk a little thicker, so I added a bit more paste at the end. I had some drips and lumps in a few spots, so I used my snips and a small file to get rid of them. Don't go overboard with this because you won't see most of the branches when we're done. I decided to paint my tree with my airbrush because I have one and I like using it, but it is perfectly acceptable to paint this tree with a regular brush or a can of brown spray paint. Unlike the cherry tree, there are no delicate pieces on this one, so you can get in there with a brush without fear of snapping anything. I'm using Tamiya Flat Brown for those who are interested. After the base coat is on, we'll give it a quick dry brush to bring out the texture. These cheap makeup brushes from Amazon work well for this application. Dip the brush in your paint and then wipe it on a paper towel until there's almost nothing left. Then, lightly flick it over the surface to catch the high areas. I built my idea off the foundation of the work from Sparky107107 on YouTube who uses thread and flocking to make the willow fronds. His channel is linked below so please go check him out for some awesome model railroad content. After trying a cardboard box I decided, as usual, to over engineer a solution to a problem that didn't exist. So off I go to the workshop to make a box out of wood. On my way out I saw this snow that was bent. What? what? Someone explain? If you live in the north, you know the pain of padlocks in the cold, but nothing a quick torchin can't fix. Here I'm just cutting some scrap wood to make a simple box. I wanted to use the whole board, so it ended up being 13 and a half by seven and a half inches. The size worked really well, but there's definitely some playroom here. After a quick glue up, she needs some anchor points. I happen to have these small broad nails that were perfect, but any small nail will do. First, I mark the points for the nails. I place mine one centimeter apart. Please excuse my arbitrary use of units, I'm Canadian, we do that. Then I snip some broad nails from the row and stick them on the box. Okay, enough screwing around, we're here to make trees, not boxes. To be clear, you can do this with a cardboard box and thumbtacks, but the wooden box will last through the creation of many trees and vines. Now, to use this new fang-dangled frond box, grab some cotton thread, and yes, cotton is important here, I tried with polyester thread and the glue does not want to stick to it. Tape the thread below your first nail or thumbtack, wrap it around that nail one or two times, and then go over the whole box in a zigzag pattern until you get to the end at which point you wrap the last nail once or twice before taping that off as well. It's helpful to keep the thread tight as you're working or it tends to fall off a lot. I anchored my box to the table with a couple pieces of rolled up masking tape to make this easier. Once everything is secure, remove the tape anchors and put some paper underneath the box to catch the glue drips in the next step. Put some PVA glue in a small bowl or container, then use a sponge brush to dab the glue onto your thread. Don't use too much glue at once or you'll get big beads that drip off. Go over it a couple times with the glue until the majority of the empty spots are gone. Then, and this is very important, switch your paper out for some clean paper, i.e. paper that's not full of glue drips that will waste all your flocking. Then flock your threads the same way I season my cooking, with reckless abandon and a complete disregard for civility. For those of you wondering, I'm using medium green super leaves from Scenic Express as my flocking, but there are lots of other brands that will do the trick for this. 
There's usually a few bare spots on the bottom, so flip it over and give it a quick sprinkle before tapping the excess flock off and setting it aside to dry. If you live in the cold like me, set this box in front of your heat pump vent and it will dry in 5 minutes. Otherwise, it will probably be closer to 20 or 30 minutes. In the meantime, go reclaim all your flocking, clean your brushes, and seal up your glue bowl for the next round. Occasionally you'll have some bare spots left over, but you can fill them by dabbing some glue on with a brush and sprinkling some flock over. I actually stopped doing this because you don't really notice those bare spots in the end, but I figured I'd mention it anyway. The fronds are still a little fragile at this stage, so you want to add some rigidity. I used matte medium thinned in roughly 10 parts water. You can use PVA glue, but I find it doesn't thin or spray quite as well. Give it a good shake to mix it up. And I forgot to cover the nozzle. Whoops. Once the threads are dry after the initial glue up, give them a good spray on both sides and set them on your messy glue paper to dry. Don't forget to clean your sink, it's really annoying to clean if you accidentally leave it for too long. Another good tip is to rinse out your sprayer with warm water so it won't clog on you. Once the sealant has dried, cut the thread along the bottom and then set it aside on a clean piece of paper. Then do this over and over and over and over and over and over. I think I made 10 boxes of fronds in all. It's tedious and involved, but you can take your time as long as you're not in a rush to finish your tree. Despite making my frond box out of wood, for this next step I used some leftover wire, clothespins, and an Amazon box to make a hanger for the bundles. A decidedly under-engineered solution. Grab a small bunch from your frond pile, separate the strands, and hang them on the wire. Cut a 10 inch piece off your cotton thread and tie it with a simple overhand knot near the top of the bundle. Put a small dab of super glue on the knot and pull it tight. I'm using the AK Fix combo here by the way. Once cured, slide the bundle off the wire and wrap your thread tightly around the top and glue in place. Now make a bunch of bundles of different sizes to add some variety to your tree. I ended up making one box of half size fronds by cutting down the middle instead of the bottom. These bundles are good for the top branches, but certainly not necessary. I was worried about some of the fronds falling out over time, so I decided to glue the base of each bundle together. First, I dipped them in 60% IPA followed by a dip in PVA glue. The IPA reduces surface tension and helps the glue run all through the threads to seal everything together. Set those aside to dry on some parchment paper or wax paper. I'm using a silicone sheet because I have one, but any non-stick surface will work. Once your bundles are dry, it's finally time to assemble this freaking tree. You'll want to look, for lack of a better term, crotches in the tree. These little tree crotches are what you're going to glue the bundles to. And not necessarily the end of each branch either, a lot of these bundles ended up looking better when they were glued closer to the tree. It's helpful to bend some of the spots down and out of the way before gluing. Some of the higher bundles need to be tucked into the lower branches. I use the short bundles on any branches that would fall on top of a lower bundle. These would need to be trimmed short later anyway. Continue sticking the bundles onto the tree crotches until it has that characteristic weeping willow look. final stage is to give these luscious locks a trim. Those bundles need to be thinned down and softened. Snip at the strands randomly until you've reduced the volume by about 15% and you can see through some sections of the tree. 
Try to make sure that the bottom isn't completely flat either because that looks pretty unnatural. Although real willow trees do drape on the ground sometimes, these strands are a bit too stiff for that to look realistic, so I made sure that none of the branches were touching the ground. And with that, our tree is done. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law, hope they won't shoot me down soon. It's really nice out here, you know? Kinda just wanna stay. If this snow fell on me though, I'd be probably not very happy. The snow is a paid actor, by the way.